Half tone training is trying to find some balance in my life. But I never really put up So today I'm in Creamore showing properties to clients. But I'm done now. So let's talk about Maffetone training. Running at a slow heart rate can be counterintuitive. I mean, when I first started looking at this method, I honestly didn't know where it was going to take me. Some of the typical questions that people always say is, I've been a runner all my life. I never in my life thought about running this slow. There's no possible way that I could get any benefit from running this way. I'm never going to get faster. How am I ever going to be able to run? I can barely keep my heart rate in my math zone. You got to be kidding me. There's no way that this is going to work. You know, there's some people who say, you know, all you have to do is run slow. But no, it's not just running slow. There's a number of other things that you need to do to make sure that you're staying healthy. Reading the big book for endurance athletes, the big yellow book right here, right here, right there. Okay. It's going to help you. Mavitone training is not something that everybody's going to come to naturally. Uh, people will source it, they'll Google it, they'll, they'll see what it's all about. And some people will say, no way. Well, I'm going to tell you, one of my friends is actually now doing it and he's cursing my name, <laughs> as you can see right here. Anyway, Steve, you're going to be okay, buddy. I'm proud of you, right? I'm proud of you. It's, uh, it's nice to see other people adopt this way of training because who doesn't want to stay injury free? As we get older, it's harder to stay injury free. It's just the way it is. Now it may be hard to start off with. I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy all the time. Like the running part is easy if you can keep your heart rate in that zone. If you can't, then you may find it harder. And you know what? You're gonna have to walk. So if you wanna get faster, if you want to reduce the chances of being injured, if you want to lose weight, if you want to have more of a healthier lifestyle, if you wanna work on your aerobic base, Let's go down this path together and I'll share with you the things that I've learned over the last little while. And some of these things I haven't even talked about before. Running at a slow heart rate has allowed me to really focus at building an aerobic base. And building that aerobic base takes time. It's like pouring a foundation, right? You pour the foundation of the house, then you can start working on the next level, okay? Same thing with running, right? You got to work on that aerobic base before you can go to the speed work. When I was a fat guy, I honestly didn't think I would ever lose weight. I honestly didn't. I thought I was doomed to just gain the weight, doomed to it to just keep coming on me. And I thought there'd be no way that I could get rid of it. Mavitone training is not all about heart rate training. Right? It's a lifestyle. It is a measurement. It is a tool to use in your life. So you have some way of measuring your fitness and where you are aerobically. And that's one of the misconceptions that people have found. Right? Most people think Maffetone method training is just all about just running slow, running slow, running slow. But it's not. And you get benefits by running slow. And, you know, I don't understand why there's so many people out there that don't think that this is a great way to train. Now, if you're an elite marathoner, you're training slow, but your definition of training slow is so different than the regular people out in the world. Elites are, have spent years building up their aerobic base. We, as mere mortals, we haven't done that. We've done the no pain, no gain. You got to go out and run fast. And well, we all know what happens. It puts us in the injury box. When you're shuffling along 
at such a slow rate, your forum may not be the best, right? You may be just shuffling and you're not even thinking about how you're running. You're just spending so much time thinking about your heart rate that your form goes to crap, right? Your cadence is not the best because you got to walk. Spend the time, build the base as a starting point. It's the foundation. Dr. Phil Maffetone also talks about taking the two week test. Okay, two week test is basically a food elimination uh, process to figure out what foods are causing your bloating, which foods are causing gluten intolerance or basically any type of intolerance. You know, it is a, a great way to figure out what's going on in your digestive tract, right? So I would uh, clearly, it's not a diet, it's just a way to figure out what's going on with you. So I would encourage you to do the test, see what happens and see what it comes back with. Then you can slowly introduce certain foods back in and see what happens. If you bloat, you know you got a problem. If you don't, then you're good to go. Now, some people have asked me, do I need to do a math test? And the answer is, you need a starting point. You need to know what you're doing, right? So whether you find a track, if you don't have a track close by, find a flat, flat stretch of road that can go for a number of miles, okay? And then get out and go do your run. Now, the thing that you need to understand is weather is gonna play a big impact, right? Uh, the so temperature, whether it's cooler, hotter, humidity, all those things play a factor. Whether there's wind, that will also be a contributing factor. Ideally, you want to pick the same time of day, the same type of weather conditions, and go out and do a three to six mile run and see what it comes back with, right? Uh, and if you're in parts of the world that uses kilometers, then find, a, find a, a place where you can either go five kilometers or 10 kilometers and you can do exact same thing. Hill training. I'd recommend staying away from the hills for a period of time, whether it's a couple of months, so at least you've established a, a fairly good base with your running. Now, if you, want, you live in an area where all you have is hills, well, you gotta work with that, okay? Meaning, you're gonna be doing a lot of walking, right? And you may have to really slow down on the hills because your heart rate may just climb way too fast. Running trails is also not bad to do, right? It's a good way to build up your strength, right? It's a good, whoa, man, it's so bright. It's a good way to build up your strength. And, you know, because the terrain is always changing, it's very cool uh, because your muscles are moving in different ways than if you're just continuously running at a slow pace all the time in the same kind of movement, right? So it's a little different because you're always looking out for rocks and roots and all kinds of things. You're moving sideways. You got a lot of that going on. So it's super important to kind of vary your running, uh, I find anyways. If you're always running the same thing all the time, it kind of gets boring. So you wanna add some variety to your running. I think that is a, a very important aspect of training as well. You really need to be paying attention to your strength training, especially if you're getting older. Strength training is super important. And you know, there's different types of stretching, right? There's dynamic stretching and there is static stretching. Dynamic stretching is what you wanna do before you run. After a run, then you can go ahead and do the static stretching. Look it up. Just don't touch your toes before you go for a run. Do the leg swings back and forth. Those, those help kind of limber things up, right? Ditch the watch. <laughs> if you guys are struggling, if you guys are suffering, having a hard time, not seeing improvements, just getting fed up with things, get out and run without the heart rate monitor. Leave the watch at home, leave the strap, as well, and just get out and run for the joy of running. Look, if you go above your Maffetone pace one day a week, is it going to destroy your math training? No, right? If you go above your heart rate by three or four beats, is it gonna derail you? No, right? 
What happens is though, is if you continuously do that and you push it and push it and push it, you may end up being in a position where you're running too fast all the time because when that starts happening more and more and more, then all of a sudden now you're not running at math and you're running in the gray zone. And when you run in the gray zone, that's where you have good chances of getting injured. Uh, basically you should be running in your, like running a race in zone three, okay? You should be uh, doing most of your runs in zone two and in zone five, not in zone three, right? Three or four, like you don't wanna be doing that. So. You save that for race day. For all of you that have a heart rate monitor in your watch, right? If it's an optical, it's on your watch, then yeah, you'll be able to monitor your heart rate, but the reliability of it may be really messed up. So I would encourage you to get a heart rate strap and the Polar H10 I find is amazing. It works awesome. It's instantaneous and it tells me exactly what's going on so there's no real worries about what my heart rate is doing you know nine seconds ago it's basically what it's doing right at the moment so i think that is a super important thing to keep in mind not all heart rate monitors are measured equally what happens when your pace basically diminishes. What happens when it stops? What happens when you stop seeing improvements? What should you do? Start thinking about adding in a little bit of speed, right? Maybe do a month of some speed work, right? Anaerobic, right? Zone five, right? Add some track work in, start doing some tempo runs, right? And do that for a month and then go back to doing math. Then start looking to see if you're improving on your MAF. And if you are amazing, then continue on. If not, maybe there's something else going on, right? And that's where you gotta look at your lifestyle. Maybe you're under too much stress at work. Maybe you're still not eating well. Maybe you're drinking too much coffee. There's just other aspects to think about. I love running. I've loved running for the last five years. I've loved running. And one of the cool things I love running is it helps clear my mind. It helps with depression. It helps with anxiety, my mental health. It helps with those things. And for me, I love that, right? I also like it because, yeah, I start to lose some weight as long as I'm running in my aerobic zone, right? And if I'm in zone two, you're burning fat, right? And actually lower, you're burning fat. But as soon as you start running in zone three and, and more anaerobically, yeah, you're going to be more burning more sugar than anything else. And that could be why you're not losing weight. Running starts my day off on a positive note. It puts me in a better spirit. It makes me just feel so alive with all of the endorphins running through my body. <laughs> it feels flipping awesome. North, this is North America's smallest jail. It's built in 1892. I don't know if it's real or not, but anyways, I mean, I'll just show it to you. So a Creamer Log Cabin built in 1870. And then this is the Creamer jail cell right there. It's very tiny, very small. Obviously it's not used. So that's what it is. <laughs> very cool. If you like these videos, please think about liking, subscribing, and all that fun jazz. Um, maybe connect in the Facebook group. We can continue the conversation there. And uh, thanks for, for joining on my little adventure in Creemore today. Hopefully I answered some of your questions. Benefits of running, some benefits of Maffetone training, a little bit of both. If you guys want to know more about Maffetone training, I think there's uh, two videos here that are going to help you right here and right here. So have a click on there and uh, let me know what you think. Until next week, guys, get out and run.